Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. And welcome to Back to Basics, Episode 7. Today we're going to talk about how to prep and clean your items to get them ready for photos. When you bring your items home from wherever you source them from, there's going to be times they have sticker residue stuck on them or permanent marker writing. Some things will be wrinkled or have stains or lint. There's just a, a whole slew of things that you can encounter when you're getting your items ready and making them look their best for their photo shoot. Of course, the longer you resell, the better you get at sourcing. And I don't just mean sourcing better items that flip for higher money or flip more quickly for you. I mean, you get better at simply just looking at items that you're you're contemplating buying, eyeballing them, and sometimes you can spot those, those things that are gonna take you a little bit more time to clean or prep or get ready, and you can decide whether it's worth that or not. Um, for instance, let's say you find a pair of shoes and they look like they're gonna require a lot of cleaning and an effort, and if you know that pair of shoes isn't worth the amount of effort it's not going to fetch a high enough price you can just put them back of course if you know once they're cleaned up they're going to flip for 80 or 100 dollars they're worth the time and effort so that's just something that will come with experience the longer you do this the ability to judge whether an item is worth the amount of effort it's going to take and the ability to eyeball and find flaws and or issues that you're going to have to take care of when you get home. But no matter how good you are at this, there's always going to be things that you encounter when you're getting things ready for photos that cannot be avoided. If the thrift store you thrift at writes on the bottom of shoes with permanent marker or sticks stickers to their glassware, that's not something you can avoid and you're just going to have to deal with it. So we're gonna talk about all the things that you can encounter and tips and tricks on how to take care of them as well as some products you can use. I'm gonna start with plush because I always do. I do have a longer video on this channel going into great detail about how we clean and prep our plush. I will link that down below for you. You can view it if you'd like. In this video, we're just gonna quickly go over a lot of items so I'm not going to go that into depth but if you get plush home and they have a stain on them you can use awesome it's found at the Dollar Tree it costs a dollar to get the stain out if it's a stain that won't come out of the plush you can spray the awesome on it let it soak overnight and put them in the washing machine some people say to put your plush in a pillowcase before putting them in the washing machine. I don't think that's necessary, but I do 100% recommend never, ever, ever, ever putting plush in the dryer. Not in a pillowcase. Not, not ever. Just no, don't. Um, some of them can come out fine, but there are too many plush out there whose fur or the material they're made out of can just be destroyed even on low heat. So I do not recommend the dryer. I do air dry mine, so if they're really bad and they need to go through the washing machine to get a bath, they do that and then they don't go in the dryer. They just sit on a counter we have set aside um, where we set all of our plush to dry. Sometimes plush will have permanent marker writing on their tushy tags. I have not, as of yet, found a way to get rid of that. So you can just disclose that in your listing. I don't really knock a lot of money off for that because I feel like a little bit of writing on a tissue tag isn't a big deal and we have best offers on. If you don't do best offers, you might want to knock off a buck or two of your price. Um, as far as like their eyeballs and their noses that can be hard or glass, you can spray a little bit of awesome on a paper towel and wipe those down or even Windex will work. All right, so now we'll move on to clothing. Clothing can have a lot of issues when you get it home and that just, you know, you got to get better at looking at it when you're at the store. If we find a brand that flips for like 20 or less and it looks like it's got stains or missing buttons and it's going to be worth a lot of work, we don't bring it home. But if you find a brand of shirt or pants or jeans that you know you can flip for a lot of money, it's worth the effort. So one of the things I recommend 
for collars on men's shirts. You know how sometimes they can get kind of stained and ugh. Uh, I just recommend OxyClean. You put like half a scoop into some kind of big, either giant bowl or if you have those big plastic bins or even in the bathroom sink or whatever, if you have a utility sink in the laundry room. Just put like half a scoop of the OxyClean and mix it in with warm water so it all dissolves. And then you can, you don't even have to put the whole shirt in. You can just kind of like cram in the collar part that is stained and let it soak overnight and then let it air dry. And a lot of times that's all you have to do and now it's ready for photos. If it still looks like it needs a little bit more cleaning and it's not a dry clean only shirt, you can run it through the wash after that but that soaking overnight in oxyclean will definitely help get anything out of the collars you can use that for flip cuffs and armpits um, oxyclean is a really great product you can soak a lot of stuff in it and it dissolves dirt oil grime blood grease it's a really good product um, i do use awesome for most of our stain removal for spot cleaning but as far as soaking items or things that need to sit overnight in some kind of soaking bath we use OxyClean. So if there's like a little stain on a shirt, we'll just use the Awesome. It doesn't need to soak, it's not a big deal. Um, as far as missing buttons, we would just disclose that in the listing. Some shirts, if you look on the inside, come with extra buttons and you can just let them know. There's extra ones if you wanna sew them on. Shirts and dresses and other clothing items can also come with a lot of wrinkles and there's four choices to get rid of the wrinkles. Whichever one you choose will be based on how much work you really want to put into it, how much money you want to spend on what you're using to get rid of your wrinkles. So choice number one is the dryer on low heat. A lot of people swear if you put wrinkled items in the dryer on low heat, it will get the wrinkles out. My grandmother used to do this, but she would put in a wet, a wet like washcloth or dish rag in there as well on the low heat and then it would act as like a steamer. Like if you put that wet rag in there with your wrinkled shirts and run the dryer on low, it creates steam off of that wet cloth and will help get the wrinkles out. Number two is downy wrinkle releaser. It does have a very strong scent, but there are different scents in the line. You can get like the fresh linen one and it's not as strong or offensive. They also have like a generic version of the downy wrinkle releaser available at the Dollar Tree for a buck. It works exactly the same. It works just as good. So you don't have to spend all the extra money for the downy name at Walmart. You can just go to the Dollar Tree and get their version of the wrinkle releaser. We used the downy wrinkle releaser for years before we upgraded to the steamer that you see behind me. You just spray it on and then you like pull and the material like pop 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 real fast and the wrinkles come right out it's almost miraculous to watch it it's like magic i really do like the downy wrinkle releaser but we were spending a lot of money on it and going through a lot of it so we decided to invest in the steamer behind me which we use for multiple purposes so that's going to be your third option you can get a steamer to steam your clothes to get the wrinkles out the one behind me is very inexpensive it is by shark i am actually going to leave a link below to where you can get this particular steamer on amazon because i love it so much and i really want everyone to have it it is the best steamer on the market and like i said it's really inexpensive the reason we really like it isn't just to get the wrinkles out of clothing, which it works, oh my gosh, it works so amazingly well. You can see we have two hangers on it. So we use it for pants, that you can see the pants hanger and you can see the other hanger. We use it for shirts and dresses. It works quick, it's fast, it's easy to use. The wrinkles come right out. But the other reason I really like the Shark steamer is because on the box it advertises that it kills bed bugs and mites and you guys know well probably you know that i have a really big issue with germs it took me almost two years to even start selling shoes because i had issues with that um so the steamer with the bed bug morning on it i love it because you know you're bringing in stuff from the thrift store and you want it clean and you want it sterilized we wash and dry all of the clothing that we purchase the used clothing before it even comes into our house but you will run into dry clean only or new with tags items that you can't run through the wash and the dryer so those items we steam with that out in the foyer 
before it even comes in the house. We put all our new with tags items on that and we just run the steamer over it. It kills bed bugs, mites, bed bug eggs. I'm sure it kills lice. Steam sterilizes. So it was sterilizing any germs off of the items and then you don't have to worry about possibly ruining a dry clean only item or trying to take the tags off and put them back on a new with tags item. You can just steam them and they're clean. We also, believe it or not, steam all of our plush before they come in the house. Before I even look at them to decide if they need to be run through the washing machine, they get steamed with that steamer. Because again, I know that steamer is sterilizing. I know what it says it kills. And I feel better about steaming any items that we're not going to wash. And you can't wash everything. You know, there will be, like I said, dry clean only, new with tags, the stuffed animals, also like baseball hats and other kinds of hats and caps that we get, I will sterilize with the steamer before it comes in the house. So that, the steamer is what I would recommend. You have a fourth choice and that's to iron. Personally, I don't like to iron anything. I never have. I'm, I just am not a fan. I don't like ironing. We do own an iron and Keith will iron certain ties um, if they're worth a lot of money and they're worth the time to iron them. Like Donald Trump, Rush Limbaugh, Brooks Brothers, um, Armani Versace, you know, like the higher end ties that are gonna be worth more than 20 bucks, they're worth it. He will try to steam it first and sometimes that works, but with some ties you really do need to iron them to get them to look really pristine and nice. And if they're worth money, that's worth the time. He also has a little um, doodad that you can buy, it's a couple bucks. Um, I don't even know what it's called, they call it the doodad. It's a piece of cloth that you put over whatever you're ironing to put a barrier between the heat from the iron and the item to keep it from getting ruined. He uses that on the ties as well because a lot of them are silk. So if you like to iron, you can iron all your clothes, get the wrinkles out, and they will look great for photos. So your four options for wrinkles, just again, because I know I like diverted there, um, you can run them in the dryer on low heat, possibly with a wet rag in there with them. Number two, you can go the uh, route of downy wrinkle releaser. Number three, you can get a clothing steamer. And number four, you can iron. I personally, if you ask me, would recommend the steamer, number one, because it's so easy to use. It's so much simpler than ironing. It is a one-time investment, so unlike the downy, you buy the steamer one time. It's a one-time investment. You just fill it with water and use it indefinitely. You're not consistently buying it like the downy. And then you can use it for more than wrinkles. That is the number one reason why I would always recommend people get a steamer, because it's not just for wrinkles. You can sterilize and clean anything you bring into your house except for shoes, which I'm getting into next after we finish talking about clothing. So we talked about the wrinkles and the stains and you will need to make them look nice for the photos. So if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money for mannequins and a lighting set, just make sure you have good lighting, some kind of a hanger or really um, something to lay it on to make it look nice when it's flat. So as far as shoes, number one, I do recommend everybody Lysol them before they come in your home. Again, that might just be one of my hangups, but mine all get lined up and sprayed down with Lysol. I don't steam shoes. I don't know that steaming would help with shoes because a lot of them are leather and different materials that that's not gonna get, the steam won't get into the way it does on plush and clothing. So we just line them up and we spray them all over and inside, really good with Lysol. We don't spend a lot of money on it. Um, we buy the Walmart brand. It works just as effectively, and it's a, actually a bigger can, and it's real cheap. And I think they have a bulk pack where you can get two. And don't forget, guys, all these things I'm talking about, the downy, the steamer, the iron, the Lysol, anything that you purchase that you're going to use on your items to get them ready for photos are tax write-offs. So you don't have to buy them with your personal money. You can buy them with the capital from your business and keep your receipts, and that is a tax write-off for you. Anything you buy for your business um, is a write-off. So real quick, let me diverse, let me diverse, let me um, mention a laundry soap that we like to use because I'm thinking about it because it is a write-off. It's called Persil. It's P-E-R-S-I-L. It comes in a giant jug at Walmart. It's really inexpensive. It has a very clean 
unoffensive, non-perfumey scent to it. It just smells clean. So you're not going to get complaints from buyers so much about how it, you know, overly smelled like laundry soap or perfume. The reason I like Persil, it goes back to my hang-ups about being clean. Persil is a laundry soap recommended to kill bed bugs and their eggs. Now, if you wash a bunch of clothes from the thrift store that may or may not have any of these things, um, putting them through the washing machine simply with any soap will kill bed bugs. Persil advertises itself to kill the eggs, which are the problem. If there were an egg on something you brought home from the thrift store, that's how it starts to spread. So, you know, like I said, before anything comes into our home, it goes through the wash and the dryer, and we use the Persil soap. Um, but I like it for more than that. I like it because it advertises it cleans um, really well, gets rid of the bed bugs, but that scent is so clean and so unoffensive, and it's so inexpensive, and it comes in this big jug. Um, so I do recommend that soap as well. If anyone out there has like, you know, the worries or the hangups that I have about germs and stuff, I know it's really funny that we um, resell used clothing and used plush, and now we're getting into shoes and I have all these hangups, but I have found ways to make things clean. And that's what you have to do. Um, it's just part of the business. If you're gonna sell clothes and plush and hats and shoes, you have to make sure that you're sterilizing them. Um, in some instances using Lysol to get rid of germs and that you're washing things and steaming them and you know taking care that your items are coming into your home clean for the sake of you and your family but also you want to send out clean sterilized non-germy items to your buyers okay so let me get off that soapbox guys and let me get back to the shoes so I do recommend Lysol for them now some thrift stores are going to write on the bottoms with permanent marker some use silver and some use black. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's really annoying. It's like, why do you have to do that? Couldn't you have just stuck a sticker on there? But no, they write it on it with marker. So there's a couple things you can use to get that off. Um, nail polish remover works. Alcohol works. Magic erasers work. Um, but just be careful. Like if you get, if you want to use the nail polish remover with the acetone in it, just be careful that you're not overdoing it because sometimes they can eat at the rubber. Um, but it shouldn't take a lot of scrubbing or elbow grease. I have found that just using um, a cotton ball, like with a little bit of the nail polish remover or alcohol on it and just kind of gently, real gently, I don't rub hard, I just kind of go back and forth, it'll start to come off. Now some of them are more stubborn and that's when you want to break out the magic eraser and that'll get it right off. Um, as far as like tennis shoes and shoes that have that white lining around the bottom of the canvas part at the top before you get to the sole, sometimes that'll get dirty or scuffed up. The Magic Eraser works wonders on that. Makes it look really nice and white. And then additionally, like if the shoelaces are dirty, of course you want to take them out and wash them or soak them in the OxyClean overnight just to make sure that your shoelaces aren't like dingy looking. Um, there are other products out there as far as taking care of leather and gluing your soles back on. I don't get into all of that. I will be 100% honest with you. I have only been getting into shoes in like the last couple of months. And the first batch I sourced sat around for a couple of months before I even attacked them and got them ready, took the photos and listed them. Shoes are not my favorite thing to do. Um, I just, they really bother me. They gross me out, but... After I put the first batch in the store and I started to see how quickly they sell and how much money they sell for, I'm leaning more towards looking for shoes more and, and doing more shoes just because it's all about maximizing your profits when you're running a business and sometimes you just have to get over yourself and get out of your comfort zone and do something that makes money even if you don't like it. But I'm not an expert on shoes by any means. I am just learning. So when I'm outsourcing, I actually am only picking up shoes that I see are going to take minimal work. If the sole is coming off or the leather looks damaged or like it's going to need, you know, buffed or whatever, I don't get them. I get the shoes that I see I can clean up with the magic eraser, get the permanent marker off of. Um, the next thing I want to mention is something I am willing to do, but only if I'm wearing gloves. But certain tennis shoes and other shoes will get like kind of dingy on the top. And sometimes the bottoms look a little dirty and worn. They'll have um, rocks stuck in there sometimes. Um, get one of those nail brushes 
they're like 99 cents at the Dollar Tree. You know what I'm talking about. You hold on to this end and it has a bunch of bristles and they're meant for nails. Um, I fill up this big bucket with hot soapy water, just dish soap guys. That's all it takes. A couple drops of dish soap, some hot water. I put the shoes down in the, in there and I let them soak for maybe a half an hour to an hour just to like let them soak in that hot soapy water. And then I take that nail brush and I just scrub them down on the top and then on the bottoms and, um, a cuticle stick. Yeah. I'm using a lot of nail stuff on shoes, right? Because they're like cheap. You can get them for a dollar or less the little nail brush. Sometimes it comes in a kit with the cuticle stick. The cuticle stick, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a long piece of wood and it's shaped kind of like a, at an angle with a point. It's meant to push back your cuticles. I use that after I scrub the shoes clean. I use that, turn it over, and if there's any rocks stuck in there, in the um, creases on the sneakers especially, I just plop them out with that right into the water. We dump the water out in the backyard. It's fine, rocks won't hurt the environment. So um, yeah, the nail brush, the cuticle stick are amazing. You can just scrub them clean and then poke out any rocks and then you can let them air dry. I don't put shoes in the dryer either. I don't really know if you're supposed to or not. I know that personally I've never put my own shoes in the dryer, but I always let them air dry. I think that's something I learned from my mother. But we just kind of like line them up, you know, and they will dry, um, air dry overnight. But like I said, there there are a lot of tools and items out there that you can purchase if you're really getting into shoes to like scuff out the leather and um, you can glue soles back on. There's lots of stuff you can do. I just don't get into it. There is a really good YouTuber out there who really focuses on selling shoes and he has a lot of great tips and tricks. His channel is called Tino the Soul Advisor. I'll link him down below. I would absolutely recommend watching him if shoes are something you really want to get into. He makes a really good living on just shoes. He talks about great brands to source. And then he also gets into more of the repair and a lot of these products and things you can use on shoes. So I'll link him down below because like I always tell you guys, if I don't know something or the answer, I will find it for you. So anything I can't tell you about shoes, he can for sure. Um, so I will link him below, Tino the Soul Advisor. So let's move on to glassware. And I'm talking like your collector's McDonald's cups, you know, the Care Bear and the Pizza Hut ones with, you know, the Muppets on it. All of those vintage glasses from the 80s and 90s that they used to sell the sets at Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Burger King. There were like a lot of them. I have a lot of them in our store. They're really, um, they're good flips if you can find them for really cheap. They take a long time, they're long tail, but they are vintage and there are collectors out there looking for them. But... The thrift stores always want to put price stickers right on the glass and then if you sit and pick it off you're left with this really gross sticky residue so there's two things that i do um one is really easy to do it just takes a little bit more time um the other one takes less time but you got to put more elbow grease into it so number one you can either just like sit there and pick it off with your thumbnail get a cotton ball or a paper towel with alcohol and rub at it and it should come right off um, that that way if you're just sitting there doing photos as you take the stickers off you can just take a sticker off wipe it down take a photo but sometimes what I do and this is the one that takes a little bit longer if I have a lot of glassware that I brought home and not just glasses we're talking plates Pyrex serving dishes um, even the collector plates you know the ones that you just put on display anything that's glass that has stickers on it um, you can either just pick them off, like I said, and then um, a little bit of alcohol on a cotton ball or paper towel works great to just take off that residue. But if I have a ton of it, like a whole bunch that I brought home, and sometimes, to be honest with you guys, I'll save it up. So I have a shelf and I'll just keep putting it all there until there's a ton of it there that I've saved up, so to speak, so I could spend a day on them. I'll fill our kitchen sink with warm soapy water, just dish soap, and put them all down in there, making sure that the side or the bottom or wherever the sticker is is completely submerged. Let them soak for five or 10 minutes and then they come right off. Like, it's amazing, it's magic. They will just, you can get a paper towel or a dish rag. Literally, if you let them soak in there for five or 10 minutes, and just wipe them like that. They come right off, all the residue and everything. Then you gotta rinse them and set them out to dry. And 
wait for them to dry, and then you can do your photos. So that one takes a little bit longer. Like, you got to let them soak for 5 to 10 minutes, and then they have to dry. If you just want to do a real quick photo shoot with all your glassware, you can just pick them off and use the alcohol. Um, another trick I use with them, if, if you soak them in the dish soap and then let them air dry, they should look really great and ready for photos. If you're just picking the stickers off or yours didn't have stickers, um, sometimes I'll just take a paper towel and I'll do like one squirt of Awesome or one squirt of Windex on there and just kind of wipe down inside and underneath. This is great for coffee mugs and um, plates, like everything I've mentioned. If it's glass or any kind of dish, what I'm talking about right now will be good for it. Um, but yeah, just wipe it down real quick. It'll get the dust and the dinginess out and make it look nice. And then I did want to mention, um, this is more for while you're taking your photos and not prep, but it is a good trick. A lot of shot glasses and drinking glasses are clear and some of them have print on the front and the back. So when you go to take your photo of the front to show them the picture, you can see through to the back and see the writing or whatever's back there. So a trick is to take a paper towel and roll it like in a tube and set it down inside of the glass um, so that the paper towel is in the glass and it blocks off the back when you're taking a picture of the front and vice versa. So it will just lay in there and it's a nice white background. You can get the front graphic and the back graphic. That's just a, a tip I wanted to give you guys. So we've talked about plush and clothes and glassware and shoes. Let's talk real quick about hats. I did mention you can use a steamer to sterilize them. I spot treat them the same way I would clothes or plush with a little bit of awesome. Um, if you have to wash them, do so on a gentle cycle and don't put them in the dryer and make sure that they don't lose their shape. If you have like a mannequin head or a hat stand, when they come out of the wash, you can put them on that and let them dry overnight. That way they don't lose their shape. Um, but hats are pretty easy. You're just really doing stain removal or washing them. Um, most of them will have like the regular clothing barbed price tags on them. You can just cut right off. So let's talk real quick about electronics. Electronics you want to be really careful with. You really don't want to use any kind of liquid cleaners on them or spray anything around them. We just take dry paper towels or soft cloths and wipe them all down to get all the dust out or off and clean them up. And then like your VCRs or anything like that that have any kind of opening, your keyboards, your laptops, you can get that air in a can. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've probably used it for your own personal computers. It's just air in a can that you spray onto electronics and it like puffs out dirt and air, um, dust and stuff and makes it clean. So the air in the can, a uh, soft cloth or a paper towel just to wipe off the dust. Sometimes your electronics are gonna have um, sticky stuff on it from price tags or just like really weird stains or stuff on it. Um, this I would recommend just getting a paper towel and just getting just the very corner, just a little bit damp with some rubbing alcohol and just very gently going over it and cleaning it. But you want to be careful. You want to test a spot that's like out of sight before you do this because you don't want to like have a, a like I say a silver VCR with a big black mark on the top where you've rubbed all the silver off with your alcohol. So just be really careful when you're getting off the sticky residue and any stains on electronics. Um, sometimes we'll try just a little bit of water before we go to any chemicals or alcohol. We'll just dip a paper towel in water and kind of scrub at the spot. Um, and sometimes that works. It's just with electronics, you don't want a lot of liquids or chemicals around it. You want to be very careful not to rub it too hard and scratch at it. Um, so the less you use, the better. If you can just do it with a cloth or with just a little bit of water or that air and get it clean, um, you're good to go because you just, um, you don't want, you don't want to inadvertently ruin something that would have worked and made you a lot of money because you, you, you got it wet or whatever. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about today, speaking of electronics, some of you are going to purchase video games and DVD movies to flip and they're going to be scratched up. There are devices out there that clean them or resurface them. They're kind of expensive. So when you're just starting out, um, maybe you don't get one right away. What we did in the beginning when we, we weren't making a lot of profits or had a lot of capital, when we found really good deals on video games that were worth the money, um, 
to put the extra effort in, we would purchase them and then we have this little tiny Rubbermaid bin that we put them all in and we made it a goal to save up some of the profit or capital from the business until we had enough money to purchase a resurfacer and then we did. So that's something you can think about, like just saving them up on the side. If they're not too bad, you could go ahead and flip them. Just make sure you get really good pictures of the scratches and disclose that. I know there are folks who will tell you there's ways to get them off with a cloth or on your own. I don't recommend it. Um, Keith doesn't recommend it. You can actually like destroy it and make it worse. I am sure there are people out there who know tricks to do it by hand and will tell you it doesn't make it worse if you know what you're doing. Um, we just are really super careful with any kind of electronics and video games. So we only use um, the least evasive methods to clean them and as far as the scratches and resurfacing uh, we only want to use a machine that's meant for that I will actually find one on Amazon for you guys and link it down below they're like 50 60 bucks the last time we checked it's been a while so you know the prices can increase I'm not sure how much they are nowadays but I will put a link to one down below if you're at a financial spot in your business where you have the capital to purchase one and you're going to be flipping a lot of video games or DVD movies, then you can get one. I would just say that make sure you're going to be flipping enough to justify the cost. We don't purchase any tools or anything for our business unless we're going to use it enough to justify that cost. Something like a Dymo printer where you're printing out labels every day or a steamer that you can use for multiple reasons or lights for good photography, that's obviously um, all good ideas to spend your money on because you're going to use them all the time and you can justify that. If you're going to go out and buy a DVD resurfacer and you source three video games every summer at yard sales, it's probably not a good way to reinvest your money. Um, but if you, you're someone that does a lot of video games and you know you're going to be doing a lot of video games, that would be a good investment for you because you can get more money for games that aren't all scratched up on the back. Um, so that said, I really can't think of anything else that I'm missing on how to clean or prep for photos. If I did actually forget something or miss something, please let me know down below and I will either answer you in the comments or come out with like a part two to this on prepping and cleaning items, getting them ready for photography. Um, I feel like this was a pretty comprehensive list, but I could have forgot something. So if I did, just let me know. That's fine. Absolutely, I can always come up with a part two or I'll answer you down below. Um, like this video if you would before you leave, you guys. We always appreciate the thumbs up. It helps the channel. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys, have a good night.